Hello and a very warm welcome to our Employers Masterclass from the Change in Education Group. This is an opportunity for employers to give you, the students, a real insight into their world of work. My name is Emma Madra, your host and careers advisor here at the Change in Education Group. Joining me today is Miguel de Souza Pires. Uh, Miguel, of Swedish origin with a Portuguese father, moved to the UK in 2000 and remained in London ever since. Fluent in Swedish, English, Portuguese, and rather well in French and Italian, his passion for meeting new people is striking. His top tip to success in life is to never judge and befriend everyone and everybody, all sorts of all walks of life. Today he owns two companies, an Apple Mac support company and a hosting company offering private and secure email and web hosting. Miguel, what do you not do? <laughs> <laughs> I don't speak Ghanaian. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the that's the easiest, the only easiest way to go about it. It's finding out what you don't do. You seem to do everything. Um, you know, it's incredible to think when someone can speak three or four languages uh, is, uh, and, you know, to think nothing of it is, uh, is, is pretty, pretty impressive. I'm sure that's uh, opened many doors for you. Yes, absolutely. And uh, thank you very much for having me to begin with. But uh, absolutely. I mean, the, the issue is, of course, that nobody speaks Swedish, right? So <laughs> I have to learn languages that other people speak and uh, it has opened up doors uh, uh, all around the world, because I now am able to offer help. I do what I do to people around the world, speaking the languages that they speak in their native language, which is which is great. Excellent. Also, so, living here in central London, which yeah. is very cosmopolitan, you meet people on the street, and what I find is if you start talking to them in their native language, they open up in a totally different way, right? <laughs> which, is, which is great. So, as you say, doors open, left, right, and center. And that's a huge advantage. I mean, sticking with the language for a minute, um, would you say once you could speak one or two languages, it was pretty easy to pick up another language? Or how does it work? I, I would definitely say so. Yes, absolutely. So you speak your, your mother tongue and then you pick up another language, perhaps in school. And as you now learn two grammar structures, it's quite easy to pick up different languages. In my favor, of course, my father was from Portugal, which is a Latin language, so picking up, therefore, subsequently French and Italian wasn't all that difficult. But um, um, I didn't mention it, but I did study Japanese for six months. Uh, <clears throat> that was a little bit different. <laughs> wow, incredible. So Japanese as well to add to your list of languages as well. Uh, so, uh, again, you know, that's, I suppose, helped you to explore different things because... You can um, have that advantage again. And when it comes to IT, I suppose, uh, you've got the advantage of uh, helping to translate programs for your clients. Yes. And, and also, um, by speaking different languages, you, why I expose myself or one would expose oneself to different cultures pretty quick, which would open up the brain to have a less of a rigid, judgmental um view on life, uh, which will, as such, also help in, in whatever one goes forward and does later in life, right? So it will be a quite a good thing to do, you know, to learn different languages, to, to move on forward there. And as you say, you know, with, with that skill, opens up opportunities that are um, otherwise not there. Excellent. Uh, so tell us about the past uh, 18 months or so. How's, uh, how's it been for you? Huh. So I, I, the IT support company that I run uh, took a nosedive in the first lockdown, um, you know, three weeks to flatten the curve. I didn't think it was my business curve. It was going to flatten, but uh, <laughs> it did a good job there. Um, then it has been uh, quite stable, um, quite low. You know, the challenges are there, right? Because the clients that I had went on furlough. Some clients went bankrupt. And so to deal with all that whilst running my own company, you know, funding myself, my own survival and struggles in life, that was uh, quite hard work. Nothing that uh, can't be done, of course, but, uh, you know, kudos to those who have survived this, this, uh, these lockdowns and all other measures that the government have put in place. Yeah, That's definitely. I uh, completely agree with you. I think uh, 
you know, especially that first lockdown was really difficult and uh, nobody yeah. knew what was what, you know, uh, people were concerned about their own health, uh, leave alone uh, the economy. And then uh, what else came along with the pandemic as well? Right. But, uh, a lot of our audience watching this who are in school and colleges, um, you know, it's been a difficult year for them also being trying to be resilient and trying to get through the past year. So um, when they hear a business owner who says, I understand what you guys went through because yeah. even in our business, you know, it was quite difficult. Um, yeah. So I think it's always helpful to hear that perspective. Uh, would you say that things are starting to even out now? I would definitely say those things are moving up forward. Yes, absolutely. Um, uh, the forecast for the, the IT support company is now much healthier uh, than it has been over the last year. The domain hosting company that I run is, is a relatively stable because if clients don't leave and clients stay, uh, the, the turnover stays the same or increases. So from, from that perspective, the hosting business is, is relatively safe, I would say. But the IT support company, yes, indeed, I'm seeing much more influx of new clients coming in. There are The businesses are now starting to spend money again. They're looking at their infrastructure. Having had a complete, should we say, pause for almost a year of having all their staff on furlough, now they're coming back in again and the owner goes, okay, great. So in terms of IT, what has happened over the last year? What do we need to do in terms of uh, keeping the staff updated? What about cybersecurity? We understand that is a big threat. And, and of course, that has increased tenfold over the last, uh, you know, during lockdown because everybody working from home, it's easier for hackers to get into the home networks as opposed to the office networks. So therefore, there, there's a big security threat out there these days. And um, I'm very busy making sure that the client stays safe, really. Stay, stay, stay safe. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, thank goodness for you. <laughs> yes. Yeah, thank goodness for you. And, you know, in that sense, you know, there, there will be more demand for your services, you know, because everybody wants to keep safer. And especially yeah. with home working now, uh, becoming the new norm, uh, it's, uh, it's imperative that, yeah. uh, you know, uh, people's networks are impenetrable. So it's uh, important to have you there. Could you tell us a, a bit about the Miguel who was 16 years old and thinking about the future and what the future <laughs> had in place for you? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a good one. <laughs> so, uh, Miguel, 16 years old, was quite different to the 47-year-old you currently are talking to. You know, he... he <clears throat> a bit embarrassing press, but he actually... He had to write a, a story <clears throat> uh, in school about what his future plans were. And um, his future plans were very, very set out. He was going to marry the Swedish neighbor he had. She was very hot. And uh, have two kids with her and become a pilot for the SAS, the British Airways equivalent. Um, that was, those, those were his goals. You know, he was determined to become a pilot. He was determined to marry the neighbor. Sadly, she walked away with somebody else. And so you know, my plan started to rock a little bit. And uh, I had to look around for other alternatives. <clears throat> Not meaning other women, of course, but other sort of other jobs and other, what, what, now what do I do? And uh, at the age of, so I, I was always interested in computers. So backtracking a little bit, but it was interested in computers. And I in graphics and I thought, okay, let me do something about this here. And I was able to, after a long story, get a job at Apple here in the UK at the age of 20, 22, 23, somewhere on there after studies. Um, and I worked there for two years, really enjoyed it. Didn't really like England. So I moved back to Sweden, continued working for an Apple dealer in Sweden. Didn't really like it because I missed England. Moved back to London in 2000 and I've been here ever since. But as a 16-year-old, as a I really remember, you know, very vividly having ideas. I knew exactly what I was going to do. And I had it all lined up, you know, like the joke goes, right? If you're going to tell God a joke, you tell him your future plans. And, and it was like, I, I, I was set. I was determined. This is it. But um, my studies in, in low-voltage electronics, in which I have a diploma, uh, you know, it, it doesn't... It gave me a good foundation, a, a good idea of obviously what I didn't want to do at all, but <laughs> it gave me an idea. I passed the, sort of the studies and I felt, okay, now let's see what I want to do. And it wasn't what I studied, 
which as I speak to my peers, you know, very often they've studied other things and end up in IT or studied other things and end up in something else. You know, we just have to look at ourselves and we go, what did I study and where am I today to see that, okay, well, perhaps it wasn't all that relevant, but um, it gave me a good foundation, a good basis. I met some really good people while studying and those people have helped me to be where I am today. Yeah, that's an, an incredible story to hear because when um, you, you think back on it, you know, everything had a purpose to serve and it was all contributing to the Miguel that we have here today, uh, yeah. established and, uh, you know, doing incredible things. Um, and even that time when you started at Apple back then, um, who would have thought, you know, in the future you would be owning your own businesses, the go-to person in terms of Mac support as well. And yeah. also just seeing the transition of the company as well, because I can imagine when you first started, it was nowhere near what it is today. Correct. Correct. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I started with zero clients. I had, uh, so my, my English was very Swedish and therefore, you know, the language was an issue, but as the years progressed, it sort of got a, a wee bit better, should we say. Um, and I, I started to connect with really important people uh, to, to get, to learn how to get clients. Um, and, and it was, if I look back on, on where I started and where I am today, I would have done absolutely nothing different, I believe. You know, I, I feel that I've done the right thing. I am in a very stable and healthy and a happy position where I am today. Um, the, the, the thing is, um, I, like I put in, in, in the, the, the description there, speak to everybody and always to everybody, you know, every walks of life. If you see the street sweeper on the street, talk to him because you never know what's going to happen, right? We're all humans. And I think that is the, the core message that, that you read out earlier, you know, that the, it's so important. You know, I might not look like an interesting person to you. You might not look like an interesting person to me. So we might dismiss each other. But in fact, you may be sitting on clients that I want to have, and I might be sitting on connections that you want to have. So why not talk to people? You know, it's, it's, it's crucial. Incredible. That's fantastic advice. And mm. in fact, I want to hang around here for a little bit longer because it's so important. And I think for our audience, again, to learn this at an early age, will mm. really set them up for life because these are the soft skills, the uh, soft power that do get people further in life. Um, so, you know, like you said, you know, treating the street sweeper as you would uh, treat um, anyone that you um, uh, respect. So, you know, as I say, treat the janitor with the same respect as you treat the CEO. Uh, and again, like you said, you know, the value in networking that comes through with that. Uh, but there's so much more that comes from that as well. And I'd like for you just to spend a bit of time just explaining why that is so important, because I think for our audience, they really, you know, want to get this point across to them, this soft skills, which get people further in life. Yeah. So if I, if I am a, a stuck up person, I believe that I know what's right and I'm always correct and I move forward in life with that, I will hurt other people. Those people might be sitting on connections that I would like to have access to in order for me to grow my company or grow my ideas. If I have, on the other hand, I am of a more gentle attitude, I will talk to everything and everybody, and intentionally so. I'm not talking to other people to manipulate them or to, to sort of intentionally benefit, but it is a genuine need, a desire to speak to people, to hear their stories. You know, you look at the person sitting next to you now, and you might say, I know that person, but do you really know that person? Have you heard their story? You know, what did they grow up in? What kind of situation did they grow up in? Were they, uh, did they go through troubles? You know, we all have troubles and inner demons that we don't really want to talk about, right? Um, you know, I was bullied myself in Sweden and for, for certain things, and I felt very uncomfortable. So I came to England and I was a way in a refuge for myself, right? But you know, and before our conversation, you may not have an idea about that. And before I said so, you didn't know about that. So, you know, it's really important that we open up and talk to people and express how we feel, the needs and desires that we have, because things will be completely different by, by them. Um, in talking to people, we get to hear other views, other stories, other ideas that we can use for our own. And, you know, we can learn things in school, in school, which is, I, I'm not talking down on the school, but school has a book 
which has been written by somebody and we learn that book and everybody learns the same book. However, the life experiences that we have in life are completely unique. You know, um, this to you is a cup and to me is a cup as well, but it has an emotional attachment to myself and it doesn't to you. So a bit like to say, right, to you, uh, my bullying is a story. To me, that is an experience. And so if we are able to understand the difference between a story and an experience, then we are heading in the right direction, whereby we can see that everybody has an experience, everybody has a story, and we can learn from that and become better people. In being coming better people, we can then suddenly start to see that actually the janitor, the street sweeper, the CEO, the airplane pilot are all humans with experiences that do different things. That's all there is. And by talking to them, we learn more about how they have grown up, what they did, and then we can implement it ourselves and move forward there. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. And yeah, I think that is a message that is needed more today than at any other point. You know, um, it's uh, it will help us all um, further ourselves in life for humanity to evolve as well. Uh, so such a uh, poignant, uh, great message there. And I yeah. hope our audience can reflect and think about um, uh, uh, that message. It's uh, such a good message. Thank you for sharing oh. that with us. Um, going back to um, work and everything that you do, uh, some people say, you know, work hard, work hard, work hard, burn the midnight oil, uh, you know, uh, do the 10,000 hours or whatever it is. Yeah. Whereas some other people that say, work smart. That's the key thing. Where do you fall into this perspective? Work, you say? Uh, do you, is, is, it, is it work? <laughs> I like that. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I thought we weren't allowed to swear here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. So uh, it definitely works smart. You know, uh, definitely 100%. Become streetwise. Learn how to, to banter. Learn how to negotiate prices. Learn how to... You know, study something, become good at what you become good at, run a company or, or work in that field that you're good at, set something else up as well. Don't rely on one source of income, have multiple streams of income. Uh, so like the IT support company that I run, it is one source of income that I have. Then I realized that actually something else that people need is hosting. I set up a secondary company that now provides a secondary income to myself. And so as we have experienced, as I said earlier, the IT support took a big nosedive in the beginning of the pandemic. The hosting business stayed strong. So there is a good example as to why it is good to have multiple sources of income, not just to get very rich very quick, but to be able to sustain oneself in case one takes a nosedive for God knows what reason. Yeah, right. You know, again, you know, setting up multiple sources of income. And I think, you know, uh, uh, a lot of times uh, we think that by the time we graduate from university, by the time we've established ourselves after 30 years at the job, then we can start thinking about those things. But uh -huh. the earlier you do it, the better it will be for yourself in the future. And, um, you know, like you did with uh, Apple learning about the Mac, that uh, experience in London before going back to Sweden and coming back again, yep. that helped you because it set up a foundation for you to be able to be the expert in that area and also to go and uh, start thinking about other businesses as well. And I'm sure there's other things that you're also doing, investments <laughs> and so on. Um, so, I, I, again, you, would you say the earlier you start, the better? Uh, definitely, 100%. Absolutely. You know, if you are a 16 year old student today, set up an ISA savings account, set up, you know, get things in motion to, to, you know, if you have any creative ideas, set up a limited company. It's not that difficult. So it takes about 20 pounds, I think, and you have a limited company that is registered in your own name. Now you have it, you can start trading on it, set up a bank account. And then I, I creative ideas that come to you that you might be able to capitalize on, speak to your peers, speak to your colleagues, speak to your teachers, your mentors and see if it's a good idea. Perhaps they think it's a great idea and they want to become partners with you. Suddenly you have a business partner that you want to go uh, into business with. So, so again, definitely speak to people always. And, and the earlier you start, the better. And don't, that. don't just get one company, right? So set up yeah. several companies. Uh, <clears throat> because if nothing else, <laughs> as it happens in the UK, if you have multiple sorts of companies, 
later in life, you can sell the company, right? Because it has been trading for, let's say, 10, 15 years. There is a maturity in the company itself. It might not have done much, but it is a maturity in the company. And that's looked good upon banks when they are extending you a loan or so. So it could be that you just set up a couple of companies, keep them for yourself, and then 10 years later, sell them. Yeah. Uh, and, and the earlier you start, the better. Um, and, and again, they added mentors as well. Uh, getting that peer support and even investment from your mentors as well in the future uh, yes. and reaching out to more people. Uh, yeah. Incredible. Um, maybe you want to consider being a careers advisor as well. <laughs> <laughs> Some great <laughs> advice. Um, so tell us about your day. What's a typical day like for you? So before, uh, so certain weeks during the pandemic it has been the, uh, during the lockdowns it has been that i wake up on monday and i have nothing in my diary and i go to bed on friday and i've done nothing at all uh for the it support side on the um before the pandemic and currently things have changed dramatically now again so i wake up on the mo- uh, monday morning let's say and i have got a whole bunch of emails that i need to respond to these are people asking you know how do i do this what do i do here um can you come out and help me? Can we do remote support? You know, what's your availability? So there's a lot of admin to deal with, usually the first hour in the morning. That's when I deal with all my emails um, and move forward. Then I am quite a gourmet. Uh, I love eating, so I plan what's going to have for lunch <laughs> very quickly. And then I deal with the, the inbound clients because there are a lot of voicemails, uh, incoming calls. I deal with them all day long. I'm basically a 24-7 kind of guy, available 24-7. I don't work 24-7. I probably work one or two hours a day. Um, but there is this availability of 24-7. My phone always rings. My phone is there. I'm next to the phone. Uh, that's how the IT support is set up. The hosting business, uh, well, there really isn't much to do there, to be quite frank, uh, which is also a good idea. So the IT support company, um, relies on the IT support team to be there and actually do the work. So that's where going back to where you say work smart to work hard. The IT, the domain hosting, I don't have to do much work on there. As long as the, everything is up and running, it rolls and it just keeps generating by itself. That's what you would say work smart, right? Because I don't have to do much. On the IT support <laughs> side, <laughs> I have to work much harder. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so tell us what you enjoy the most uh, in, in your day. Sorry, Lunch. can you hear Lunch. me? <laughs> Lunch? Yeah, What I enjoy the most is, quite frankly, speaking to customers, um, the, the interaction with other people, the, the talking to people and helping them. Um, I think my character is very much that of assisting others. So if I look at the IT support company, it, whilst it is about helping, uh, about doing computer support, right? And it's very technical and can be quite boring at times for the uh, customer. But the intention is to help. If I look at the domain hosting company, hosting emails, well, that's a boring subject, right? But the intention is to help. So it appears that my character where I have capitalized, where I've looked at things and go, okay, what can I do in life that will help others? And so IT support and domain hosting are things that I can do to help others. So what I really enjoy is when clients get in touch or when I call clients or naturally when I go out and meet clients, I much prefer the sort of social interaction. I'm very tactile, so I like to see people in person um, and, and, yeah, have lunch. (laughs) <laughs> so other than having lunch oh, it's uh, the helping people which is again you know it goes back to those um, skills that we we're talking about earlier on is putting others first and yeah. thinking of others um so um we're already coming towards the end of our interview what final words of advice would you offer to our audience it's very interesting because uh, before this i was thinking and i came across a picture um that sort of encompasses at least one sub one part of the conversation that is it says never look down on somebody unless you're helping them up uh, and i think that that sort of income that summarizes everything that i wish to to portray it to people that you know you you may have a plan for life the plan may not go as it wanted to as you wanted it to go be okay with that because the plan 
was never yours to make anyway. <laughs> so while we make the plan, it won't happen as your plan. That's okay. Adapt. You know, learn to adapt. Always be the adaptable kind of person and never look down on other people. Always talk to people. Always be what's the word I'm looking for? Empathy? Yeah. Listen. Listen with empathy. With empathy, you can listen to other people. They will you will gain their respect. And as you gain their respect later in life in business, they will come back to you and say, hey, see and so, you know, we had a really good communicate connection at uni or a college. Can we have a conversation now? I'm setting up a new company. I thought of you. Uh, and that thinking process very often comes from the emotional experience that we have of somebody. And you never know what it's going to bring. You know, you could be running another company with somebody else who had a creative idea who approached their mentor and then thought of you because you're a nice person. Incredible empathy. You're a source of wisdom, a source of knowledge and wealth. It's been an absolute joy just uh, hearing you talk. I can listen to you all day, I think. <laughs> it's, uh, it's great just hearing, um, you know, your philosophy and how you think. And yeah. I think this is something that we all have to take on board and apply to our own lives. Now, before I let you go, I do have one last important question to ask. Yeah. Um, you're very continental across Europe. Who are you supporting in the Euros? Uh, are you following the Euros? And who's your? where does your allegiance lie? <laughs> <laughs> well, you see, my character is of such that I don't really like football. <clears throat> <laughs> Very diplomatic. <laughs> if I were to pick a team just to annoy you, I would say France, perhaps. But <laughs> uh, if I had to choose a team, it would be Sweden. Um, because I'm Swedish and in football, one is supposed to be patriotic. Um, so Sweden, I would support. Uh, failing that, England. <laughs> well, at least there we have it. A little bit of support is better than no support. <laughs> <laughs> May I ask, who do you support? Oh, uh, yeah, England, no one else, that's it. <laughs> and loyal. Um, but no, thank you so much. It's been an absolute joy uh, just to have you here today. Uh, thank you for sharing your experiences, sharing your knowledge, your wisdom with us. As I said, you know, uh, I could listen to you all day. And I think, you know, you've got so much good to share. And, wow. and these skills, if uh, we can apply just 10% of these, uh, will be a wonder. So, um, again, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Thank you.